So we have been looking at a new kind of uh, or a different kind of neural network which is recurrent neural network and last class we spent some time on showing that uh, it is uh, hard to train these recurrent neural networks because of the specific problem of exploding and vanishing gradients. In particular we saw that if you want to propose uh, if you want to back propagate the gradient from time step t the final time step to an arbitrary time step k then you have this multiplicative term in the back propagation uh, which could explode or vanish. So, today we are going to try to see if uh, uh, we are trying to focus on something which can help us solve this problem to whatever extent. Right? So, so that is why we will look at uh, LSTMs uh, long short term memory cells and gated recurrent units. Okay? So, let us start with that. So, first we will introduce the idea of uh, selective read, selective write and selective forget and then we will try to build on this intuition and see how could you could realize it uh, by using LSTMs and gated recurrent units uh, and whether that helps in solving the vanishing and exploding gradient problem. So, recall that the state of an RNN records information from all the previous time steps. Right? That was the whole idea that you add this recurrent connections. So, as you keep going on at this time step, this cell is not only recording information from the current time step, but it also has some kind of an accumulated history from all the previous time steps. Right? But now the issue is that this state or this blue colored vector that you see is going to be of some finite size. Right? You will say that okay, it is a 100 dimensional vector or a 1000 dimensional vector, but whatever be the size, it is going to be some finite dimension. Now, as you keep writing information to that cell, you are morphing the information that you had written at the earlier time steps. Right? Do you get that? So, now that is the problem, right? because on one hand you are saying that you want to record the information from all the previous time steps. But the other time you are, at the other hand you just have a finite amount of memory to deal with. So, it is bound to get overridden and the information will get morphed so much that it is completely impossible to say what was the original contribution at time step 1 or time step 2 once you have reached some time step 20, 30 or so on. Right? So, that is the problem with uh, uh, recurrent neural networks and we will tie it back to the problem that we had with the vanishing and exploding gradients. Right? So, in fact a similar problem occurs when you try to when the information flows backwards during back propagation. Right? It is very hard to assign the responsibility of the error caused at time step t to arbitrary time steps before it, right? to very far away time steps it is very hard and that is the vanishing gradient problem, right? because you have this multiplicative term and the gradients vanish. So, that, that is very hard to do. So, both during forward propagation the information vanishes and even during backward propagation the information uh, vanishes right and we saw a formal argument of this while doing vanishing gradients. So, this is just an illustrative diagram, but we also saw that formally the gradients do vanish under certain conditions right. Now, let us see an analogy for this and from here on we will build on some ideas which will help us arrive at LSTMs and gated recurring units right. So, the analogy is a whiteboard. So, you have a whiteboard and it is always of a fixed size right. I mean the whiteboard is not infinite you just have some size for the whiteboard and you keep writing information on that. So, at every time step I keep going and writing something on the board and I am trying to derive something or just try to make a story or anything right. I just keep trying to write information on the board. Now, since the whiteboard is uh, fixed size at every time I am essentially morphing the information which was written at the previous time step and after many time steps it would be impossible to find out that now whatever my state of the board is how did time step 1 contribute to that state. Right, because it is written all over the board, I do not know where I started, what I did and so on and it is going to be very hard for me to find out and this happens right, when you do these long derivations on, on the whiteboard, it becomes very hard to track okay, where did I start with, where was this variable defined and so on right, because it is a fixed size. So, you cannot really and you will end up deleting some terms and so on right. So, and we will make this more concrete with the help of an example right. Suppose I am trying to derive an expression on the board and typically what we do is we use three things. We use selectively write on the board, selectively read the already written content and selectively forget or erase some content. So, let us see what I mean by these three ideas. Okay. Uh, so, first we look at selective write. So, this is my problem. This is the derivation that I want to do on the board and I have a very small white board which allows me to write only three steps. Okay. That is the situation in which I am operating. Okay. So, I am given the values of A, B, C, D and I want to compute this expression A C into B D plus A plus A D. Okay. Now, the first thing that I am going to compute is A C right that makes sense because that is the first term that I need. 
So, I will write a c equal to 5 ok and the second thing I will write is b d equal to 33 ok. So, now why did not I do the following I could have done this a equal to 1 c equal to 5 then a into c is equal to 5 then b is equal to something then b into d is equal to something. So, what am I doing here while writing on the board why did I write only 2 steps because I know I have a finite size for the whiteboard right. So, I am only trying to write information which is important right. I am not writing everything because I know that I am going to run out of memory right. So, that is why I did not write these intermediate steps that a equal to 1 c equal to 5 and then a into c equal to 5 and so on right. I just wrote the results which are important. So, I am selectively writing to the board because I am dealing with a finite sized memory and this is exactly what we do while writing in a notebook or a whiteboard or anywhere right. We just do not write everything one because we are lazy, but second is also because we do not have enough space right. So, that is about selectively writing. Now, selectively reading I already have something stored on the whiteboard. So, this is the state of the whiteboard at this point. Now, at the next time step I need to read some information, but I do not need to read everything that is on the whiteboard. I just need to read some information. What is the information that I need to re read for the next time step BD I do not need to read AC right. So, I am just doing a selective read of the information or the state which is already stored on the whiteboard. Now, what has happened is I have exhausted my space right I had just 3 steps that could be written on the whiteboard and I have done that. Now, what do I do for the next thing now I need to compute AC into BD plus A I will have to selectively erase. So, what will I erase BD right. So, now I the whiteboard is full and I will have to selectively inf delete some information and as is obvious in this trivial example that you could get rid of BD because you have already encoded the information in BD plus A and now the next step which is AC into BD plus A can go on the whiteboard and this is how you keep doing at every time step you selectively write at every stage here again note that I have not written uh, AC into BD plus A would be something like uh, I do not know what was it uh, phi into 34 and then that is equal to 170 right I am not using 2 steps I am just writing everything in a single step because I do not have enough space right. So, selectively writing selectively reading and selectively forgetting things which are there in our constant memory is something that we do regular right and there are other ways of motivating this. So, you could even think of our brain as something which can store only a finite number of facts right as we keep growing old if we keep learning more and more things we can only retain a finite number of facts and what happens inadvertently is that you erase some of the steps not consciously of course, you do not have a delete button or anything, but you erase some of these things right you forget a lot of things which had happened a year back or so. And also at various times if I ask you what was this which I had done in last class most of you forget to do the selective read, but that is what you do right you always do selective forget, but that is what we typically do in our brain also right any time when you are dealing with a finite size memory you will always have this 3 operations either they are explicit or implicit, but the intuition is that you end up doing this ok. So, now since the RNN also has a finite state size can we do something like this selective read write and forget. So, that one during forward pass even if the information gets morphed it gets morphed in a principled manner right. So, even in the whiteboard example I was morphing the information I was deleting the information written at time step 1 time step 2, but I was being a bit smart about that I was retaining some good information and only deleting what was not required. So, can we do this in RNN. So, this analogy really sets it up. But now the solution is not going to live up to the expectation, but it will have some it will be something in this direction ok. Mm -hmm.